In this video, we introduce the idea of an electrical transformer and how it works qualitatively. Next, we derive the transformer formula relating the input and output voltage, and we work a related example. Finally, we look at power in and power out for the transformer, and this allows us to relate the current input to the current output, and we'll work a related example for that as well. So a transformer is a device for changing AC voltage by taking advantage of electromagnetic induction. Lenz's law tells us that EMF is induced to oppose any change in flux through a loop or a coil. And the idea here is that we run alternating current through the left coil, that's called the primary, that's what the P is for. And running alternating current through this coil creates an alternating magnetic field through the interior of that solenoid. Then we use something to guide those field lines over to the other coil. So one way you could build a transformer is by nesting the coils one inside the other, but you can also use laminated iron to guide magnetic field lines from the first to the second. Well, this means that we're exposing the second coil, and that's called the secondary coil, to an oscillating magnetic field through its interior, and that induces an EMF to oppose all of those flux changes, and so we have an induced voltage coming out of the second coil. The induced EMF follows Faraday's law, where the N here is the number of turns in the coil, the phi is the flux through each loop of the coil, and delta phi over delta T is the rate of change in the flux. And I can see from Faraday's law that a larger number of turns, N, results in a larger induced EMF. And that's the main idea of this electrical transformer. If I put more turns in the secondary coil than there are in the primary coil, then the induced EMF on this side of the transformer can be higher than what I put in on this side. We can also run this the opposite direction and step the voltage down by using a transformer. And these are called step up and step down transformers, respectively. So to get quantitative with the derivation of the transformer formula, I have to start by assuming that R is small in the primary coil. There's very little resistance to worry about, and you'll see how that comes into, into play in a minute. And I've applied an AC voltage VP to the primary coil, and that induces an induced voltage in that coil as that coil fights the changes in flux. Now without getting too mired in the details, what I'm going to do here is apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to this loop, assuming that I don't have to model any resistors in there. So that's where the assumption R is small comes in. And as I traverse this loop, I would get VP, so the voltage that we're applying to this thing, minus my induced voltage equals zero. And you could argue about whether that should be a plus or a minus and what the directionality of this induced voltage is, but it doesn't matter for our purposes. We're just trying to get a magnitude out of this. And this is good enough to show that the primary voltage magnitude should be equal to the induced voltage magnitude. And I'm gonna go ahead and emphasize that I'm dealing with magnitude by just erasing the minus sign. All right, so the reason we had to relate the primary voltage to the induced voltage in the primary coil is that it's the delta phi through these turns in the primary coil that's shared with the secondary coil because we're guiding that magnetic field through every single loop. So when I look at the induced voltage in my secondary coil, and again, I'm, I'm just going to speak in magnitudes from here on out. That's going to be NS times delta phi delta T, and that's the same rate of change in flux because the magnetic field through each turn of both coils is the same. And that produces what I called in the original picture the secondary voltage. That's just an induced voltage. So I have one formula relating the primary voltage, number of turns in the primary coil, and rate of change in flux, and another one relating all those secondary quantities. And it's the rate of change in flux that's the same, so let's go ahead and solve for that in both cases. Delta phi over delta t on the primary coil side is going to be VP over MP and delta phi over delta T on the secondary coil side is going to be VS over NS. Finally, I put these together using the fact that the flux is always the same through each turn of either coil and I get what's commonly called the transformer formula. VP over NP is equal to VS over NS. So let's check out a short example. I have a transformer with 100 turns in the primary coil 650 turns in the secondary coil and I want to compute the secondary voltage if we apply a 10 volt AC voltage to the primary. So really we're just plugging into the transformer formula 
and I'm after the secondary voltage. And I want to point out here that anytime the number of turns in the secondary is bigger than the number of turns in the primary, you're going to get an increase in the voltage. And what we're looking at here is a step up transformer. So I get 650 over 100. Voltage in the primary was 10. Cancel a factor of 10 and I end up with 65 volts for my output. So one really important point here is that transformers only work with alternating current because we're relying on flux changes to induce voltages. If you run a DC voltage through the primary coil, nothing is going to happen on the secondary side because there are no flux changes happening. And this is one serious advantage of running alternating current for the power grid because you can manipulate the voltages as much as you want. And I'll do another example in the near future on how running our major power transmission lines at high voltage actually saves a bunch of energy losses. So next we're going to examine power in a transformer. And the key physical principle is that whatever power is going into the transformer better be the same as the power going out. There's no energy buildup in there. And I can always write down electrical power as current times voltage. So the current going into the primary side times the voltage there is equal to the current coming out of the secondary side times the voltage there. So that's useful enough to put a box around. But now I want to manipulate this by using these expressions for the voltage that we had. So we had the VP was the number of turns there times the rate of change in flux. And similar for VS. And if I replace VP over here and replace VS over here, those rates of change in flux are going to cancel and I get another useful formula. IP times NP is equal to IS times NS. And now we know how to relate the input current and output current to the relative number of turns in the two coils for the transformer. And here's a quick example just to wrap things up. I have a current input of 5 amps into a transformer with 100 turns in the primary, 650 in the secondary. And I want to know what the output current must be. So if I just take this last formula in the box and solve it for the secondary current, I'll plug in my number of turns in the primary, secondary, input current. And this comes out to 0 0.77 amps. So when we first introduced the step up transformer, it might not seem fair in our first example to turn 10 volts into 65 volts. But when we examine this energy conservation issue, we find out what the trade-off is. So you can step up your voltage to a higher voltage, but your current gets smaller when you do that. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.